Hi everyone, I'm Rob from Project Sandbox. In this video, I'm going to show you how to add and modify effects to your videos. So the first thing that you want to do to add or modify an effect to your video is to have a look at the effects panel. So if you look at it, you'll see that there's a bunch of different options that you can choose from. Some of the ones that I think are a little more useful than others are this brightness and contrast option and this hue option right here. Some of the other ones offer a little more uh, specialized usages like blurring or pixelating or adding waves. They're just not commonly used for a lot of your purposes. So basically to add an effect to a video clip, all you have to do is click on the effect you want and drag it over top of whichever clip you want to add it to. So if you see brightness and contrast is now added over top of this island picture. So if we want to modify the effect, all you have to do is click on the icon that it just added. So this little B here. And you'll notice all of these values appear in your properties uh, panel. From there, all you have to do is either increase or decrease whichever effect you want to modify. So if you look right here, we can adjust the contrast and you'll see it getting changed right here. And then we can do the same with brightness. Obviously, whenever you add these, it's good to experiment a little bit and to have an idea of what you want this final clip to look like. I would suggest playing with most of these filters or effects if you want to see what they actually do. Um, the other one I will show you really quick though is this hue one. So once again, I'm gonna click and drag it over here. And then we can see that we can modify the hue of this. Um, actually, the only other one that you might use is this color saturation one. Um, color saturation is good if you notice that it's a little too um, colored or if you want it black and white. You can use this to really mess with how much color is in your image. So that's basically how you would just add any of these effects. It is good to know um, how to remove these if you don't like them. So say I wanted saturation removed. You can just right click on the symbol and click remove effect. And I'm going to do that with this hue one too. If say you wanted to copy your effects across multiple um, clips. So say if you were recording a video of yourself, you wouldn't want the color or saturation or anything like that to change from shot to shot. So what you can just do is if you actually click on your clip and right click, you can go to this copy section right here and click on effects. Then all you have to do is click on whichever one you would like to move that to, right click on it and hit paste. And then you'll see that it's moved over. I should warn you that it's a good idea to make sure that you are totally happy with the way that effect looks because if you do modify this effect it will start to be a little wonky with what you'll actually see being changed so if you look right here i'm modifying this but the cat doesn't get modified in the same way when we're playing with it so just be aware to copy the effect once you're actually happy with it so that it doesn't add um, additional problems. And if you noticed when I just removed that brightness and saturation from the cat there, it removed that from the original one. So that's just something to be mindful about whenever you're doing um, property changes like that. All right, so now we understand how these effects work, but there's actually some effects that are inherent to your audio and video clips as well. And we can see them in the properties panel when one of these are selected. So if I click on this first video clip, you'll see a whole bunch of options appear right here. 
So a couple of the ones that you might use regularly are this alpha value one. So alpha refers to how transparent your clip is, but if there's nothing behind your clip, it'll just appear black. So if you notice me manipulating this, you can see my clip getting darker and darker as I modify it. So if there's nothing behind your clip, like you can see right here, that's why it's getting black. If for some reason my clip was over top of say this one, what you'll see when I modify this is that the under clip will show through more. So it just is acting as a transparency is basically what's happening right there. The other ones that you might use for uh, changing lots of things on your video is actually pretty much the only one that I would suggest you really play with is this volume option. We won't be able to modify the audio on this clip because the audio on this clip is nothing as we learned from my previous video. But what we can do is actually modify the music. So by clicking on here, you can see that I can still modify the volume. So if I click play, we can hear that it has a pretty good uh, volume level. But what I can do is I can lower this and play it again and it'll be quieter. So it's obviously a little quieter now. So this works when you're really trying to balance sound between say like your dialogue versus your music because you don't want your music to overpower whatever dialogue is in your video. But what this can also do is it can uh, help you do kind of fade ins with music or fade outs and stuff like that. Same can happen with this. So to do these types of fade ins and fade outs, we have to learn about a concept called keyframes. So what a keyframe is, is basically, is you're saying in your timeline, this specific time is important, which is a keyframe. That's why they call it a keyframe, obviously, because this one frame of your footage is an important frame to reference. So what you can do with keyframes is you can say at this point of time, I want my video to look like this. And then at this point in time, I want my video to be like this. So let's use the music to show what that looks like. So what I'm going to do is we're going to create a keyframe. So at the beginning of this clip, I want the audio to be nothing. And you'll notice this box appeared right here. So now when I play this, we can see that no sound actually happens. And we can see that this is highlighted green at the beginning. So this is our first keyframe. What I can do now is I can move my playhead over here. And now I want the uh, volume to say, I want it to remain quiet for one second. So that's more or less one second right here. So what I want to do to make sure that it stays quiet for that amount of time is I want to add a keyframe here. So to add a keyframe here with this selected, I want to right click on the volume option and say insert keyframe. So now from this keyframe all the way to this keyframe, we know that it should be quiet. There we go. So now it's quiet from zero seconds to one second. Now at two seconds, I want it to be at full volume. So if we move this over just to where this says two seconds. Now right here, I can actually just increase this and it'll automatically add a keyframe for me. And you can see that it added a keyframe because you can see these little ticks are getting added down here. So now when I play it, it's going to be quiet from zero seconds to one second. And then from one second to two seconds, it's going to increase from 0% loudness to 100% loudness. So let's try it out to make sure it worked properly. There we go. So you can see that it worked. So that's basically how keyframes work. Is it saying at this point in time, I want it to look like this. And at this point in time, I want it to look like this. 
So the reason why we had to add this in between keyframe is because if I would have just said 0% down here and 100% here, it just would have had a more gradual increase in loudness. So I need to make sure that I specify this keyframe here. Something we could have done to modify this and not add so many keyframes though, is I could have just left out that first keyframe and just put 0% here. Because what it would say is from here to here, is it still saying that it should have no volume. Um, if you ever do want to modify, say, these keyframes in the future, like say you wanted this one to be at 50% uh, loudness and not 100%, you would just need to search for it on the track to where this actually turns green. So if you hit left or right with your arrow keys, that's a good way to just advance the video clip by one frame. So if we move over here, you can see that this turns green as I go over top of the uh, keyframe that we just created. I'll zoom in really close so you get a better look at it. And then what you can do is you can just modify that to whatever you want. If say you were one frame off, it would mess with your keyframes and it wouldn't work properly. So if you look, I have two keyframes really close together now. And then this one keyframe basically gets written off because this other one is just saying that it's the max loudness at the frame afterwards. So it wouldn't really work properly. So just be mindful of doubling up keyframes like that because it'll mess with what you actually want. And then if you want to remove one of these keyframes, all you have to do is go over top of it on your timeline and then right click right here, just over top of this little box and hit remove keyframe. And then it'll remove that specific keyframe. If for some reason you didn't want to zoom in and just wanted to remove keyframes, all you have to do is just advance past the keyframe that you want to delete and hit remove. And then, oh, sorry. Don't do it that way. That way is going to totally delete your footage. You want to go here, right click and hit remove. And then if you notice that keyframe just deleted. So that's basically all you need to know for keyframes. Keep in mind that you can change any of these properties in this way, and that includes any of these uh, effects that you put over top of your video footage. So say here I added the brightness and contrast. We can click on brightness and contrast here, and I can move my playhead over here. And then I can say at this point, I want it to be 100% brightness. And if you notice, it did add a keyframe when I did that right there. And then at this point, bringing that up again, I can say I want it at 0% brightness, which equates to negative one right here. And then that's how my video footage will actually look. So play around with keyframes and experiment with what your footage might look like. Keyframes are a good way to add animation to your different video clips. So say you can modify the scale of things, like moving to this cat picture. Um, say I didn't want those black bars on the cat. We could go to scale and scale it up. That doesn't work that way. So we'll have to do it manually, which is sometimes what you have to do. You can just double click on it to add it manually. And so I just made it 1.5 times bigger that way. And just to keep the scale appropriate, we would do the same that way. But what you can do when you do that is if you notice, there'll be a nice little increase. So please feel free to experiment with any of these different properties and keyframes. because that's basically how you'll be creating animation in your videos. So that's what I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching it, and I hope that this helps kind of demystify how keyframes and video animation works a little bit. Um, if you have any questions, you know where to get a hold of me. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video.